So, welcome back, everyone. Uh, it is my real pleasure to introduce uh, the next session of this morning, uh, which is uh, from data to inference and to machine learning from there. Um, so, while most speakers who have been on the stage, you know, yesterday, um, have a very long relationship with LIDS and are able to tell you quite a lot about the history. Uh, my relationship with LIDS only started four years ago uh, when I joined LIDS, um, actually exactly four years ago in November 2015. And so what I thought I would do as this introduction to this um, session is to give a very brief uh, overview on the very recent past in these four years and maybe tell you a bit about why I joined LIDS. Um, and then tell you a bit about the current. Um, so that is where, what I think has been the main impact of LIDS in actually this effort of going from data to inference to machine learning. So as I said, I joined LIDS uh, in 2015. Um, and just to tell you a bit about how maybe my research fits into LIDS and what a unique place LIDS is. Uh, so I have uh, undergraduate degrees in biology and in uh, mathematics, in pure mathematics. Um, and then I went on to UC Berkeley to do my PhD in statistics. Now, I worked on something which maybe most of you have not heard yet, on al algebraic statistics. So that's the use of nonlinear algebra. So a lot of linear algebra has been used in statistics before, if you think of regression, et cetera. But this is nonlinear algebra, or algebraic geometry, or commutative algebra, um, for studying graphical models, um, and in particular also for applications to genomics. So, I mean, I was very comfortable in going to, you know, pure math conferences or statistics conferences or also genomics conferences, but really I was quite an outsider in all of them, right? Because um, a mathematician would surely not really consider me a mathematician because I was actually interested in genomics problems. Um, and a statistician would feel that I was too mathematical or I was actually doing the wrong kind of mathematics because you know, linear algebra is totally okay, analysis and probability is totally okay in statistics, but not this strange algebraic geometry. Um, and then genomics, of course, I also wasn't really part of that because I wasn't doing experiments. And so I think this is one of the unique things and which really shows you what Liz, LIDS is all about. It's, you know, really embracing all kinds of different applications that we've also already heard about yesterday, right? and now in particular also applications to genomics, but in particular all kinds of mathematics. And, you know, we have like very, very already, you know, big um, examples from earlier on. And, and nowadays, you know, if we think of, for example, Pablo Perillo's research, who has used, you know, algebraic tools in particular, non-linear non algebraic tools, for a long time already in optimization. So I think this is really um, what makes, uh, to me, uh, LIDS uh, such a unique place. And, um, not being maybe the traditional statistician, I actually found it very exciting and very intriguing um, to, you know, see that MIT, who didn't have a statistics department, um, was trying to make this effort, this concentrated effort, in actually hiring statisticians. Um, and I was really wondering uh, to which entity these statisticians would belong to. Um, and Munzer didn't talk about this, but um, it was actually quite interesting that they would belong to the entity. Um, so, because for a long time that was the name of IDSS um, for, you know, maybe um, the lack of a better name, I guess, uh, for a long time. So, um, yeah, so, so I was, let me maybe tell you a bit about the interview. So I was in, invited to interviews in February 2015. Um, now, maybe the people who actually live in the area, uh, you might remember winter 2015. Um, so, there were big snowstorms all the time. Uh, so, I managed to make it in before a storm. But uh, the next day, there was about a meter of snow. Um, and in fact, the whole city was closed. Uh, so the trains were not running. Uh, the restaurants around here were closed. Uh, MIT was closed. Um, and so I was here because the hotel was here. Uh, so I was actually at close to MIT. But of course, hardly nobody was able to get into MIT because the trains weren't running, the streets were closed, etc. So it was a, a fun experience with whoever was able to walk to MIT to have my interviews completely, um, you know, with no program whatsoever. 
Um, so that was my first experience at MIT. And as a Swiss, it was really quite interesting to see that you would prefer to shut down a whole city because of one meter of snow and not like actually work through the nights and clear the streets. Um, uh, I, I just couldn't believe it. Um, so, so that was my first experience um, at MIT. Um, so then I had to return, of course, for the real interviews. Um, so I came back a month later. Um, and, you know, maybe more on the serious note, I mean, I really actually didn't think I would like it that much at MIT before coming here. Um, and this is maybe something that we all still have quite a lot to do, is um, in terms of the reputation of what I had heard of not, you know, I had really not been here, not spent any time here as a PhD student or postdoc, et cetera of the reputation it has of what I had heard, in particular for women, as being a very harsh place. And I think this is really something that all of us, you know, who have had like these amazing experiences here still have to work a lot about um, in terms of changing this. Um, and so I was, I had really an amazing experience, I mean, when I visited here the second time. In particular, I was interviewing with a lot of faculty in Lids, and you know, just being in Lids, and this has been already said before, you could really feel what a very nice place and welcoming place and supporting place Lids really is, which really allows you to actually do the best research you could possibly do. And so that was really clear, and you know, I mean, pretty amazing that that can become clear during an interview, right? <laughs> That's probably, you know, I mean, to actually make that happen, I think, you know, it's a really a very strong statement to all of the faculty members um, who are in LIDS and who have made the place during the last 80 years the place it is now. Um, so in terms of interviews, since I was working on the problem of learning graphical models, I was particularly excited to be uh, meeting with Alan Wilski. Um, so during my PhD, it was actually quite frustrating because very often I would, you know, be very happy of discovering something and then reading Alan's papers to see that he had done this many, many, many years ago. Um, but I learned so much by reading Alan's papers and, you know, his pioneering work on learning trees and learning graphical models uh, more generally. Um, and in terms of interviews and meetings, I also really remember the long meetings with Munzer, um, and those were great meetings. Uh, so where he really told me, you know, gave me kind of the previous, uh, the previous talk that he gave, but in an earlier version of really telling me about the vision um, that IDSS has in building the 21st century statistics. Um, and I think it is extremely fortunate that it was, you know, LIDS faculty that were driving the effort of, in fact, building the 21st century statistics and the effort and defining um, what data science is um, now for MIT. And why do I think this? Because I think it really made, you know, how we think about statistics here at MIT is as a very strong marriage between applications on one side and mathematics on the other side as has been researched at LIDS all the time, right? Where particular applications can drive and do drive statistical theory, but the statistical theory then actually feeds back into the application. And, you know, in terms of um, what John would say, what is the glue, or what I think is the glue about these two of applications and theory um, is, in, for us in statistics, is really computation. And I think um, Munzer also had, at the beginning, the word computation up there. Um, I think for you know, statistical theory to be really directly relevant for applications, we need to think about computation from the start. And not having this whole backpack of a traditional statistics department behind us, we were actually able to build you know, a 21st century statistics and data science where we think about computation already when we define the problem. And I think this is really something um, that is unique here at MIT um, in our effort um, of building statistics um, and data science. And I think really also allowed us, and still you know, is allowing us, to be very tightly knit with machine learning, right? So if computation is already part of how you think about you know, statistics, data science, then of course machine learning also fits in there and will be very tightly knit. And of course, machine learning has been thinking about computation for much longer. It's really statistics that has really always been behind, right? And so if we bring all of these together where applications and statistics is already glued together by applications, then machine learning can actually very nicely interface with all of these areas together. So uh, LITS, in my opinion, has had a huge impact here at MIT. 
um, in how it has formed statistics and data science intellectually and culturally, I think. Um, and it is really a super vibrant place today. Um, I think it's a really exciting place to be at. Um, I feel honored um, to actually be a part of this effort of really bridging data to inference to machine learning. So I thought this is like just a brief uh, personal state or statement of uh, where statistics is and data science and machine learning today at MIT. Um, and with that, um, I would like to introduce Ahmed Taufik, who just told me before how I actually rightly pronounce his name, and I hope I did that okay. Um, he will deliver remarks um, on Alan Wilski. So Ahmed, he's a professor and chair of the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Texas at Austin. Um, he received his PhD from MIT under the supervision of Alan, and he has had a really illustrious um, career in academia and in industry. So among many honors, and I will not list them all, he's a fellow of the IEEE. His research is very interesting. It spans many areas, including cognitive augmentation through man-machine symbiosis, uh, medical imaging, brain computing interfaces, et cetera, et cetera. So please join me in welcoming Ahmed.